17.1a this is mr k's good day good day we're talking about the renaissance and the renaissance is roughly from 13 uh, ad 1300 ad to 1600 ad it's defined as a rebirth in learning rebirth in learning what had just happened is the middle ages we're coming out of the middle ages and it was safer to travel people starting to read and write and all that good stuff so it's a rebirth in learning they're tapping into ancient Greece and ancient Rome, the classical civilizations. And we see it start in Northern Italy. Why is that? Well, there's some reasons here. Number one, they were not in war like Britain and France was farther north. For about a period of 100 plus years, England and France were at each other's throat in the Hundred Years' War. Number two, we had thriving cities. When I say thriving cities, that's urban areas that were making money. Number three, classical heritage of Greece and Rome. The ruins were in their backyard to kind of inspire them to create stuff. And then boats from the Crusades had docked there. So they made a lot of money off of the traffic of uh, people going down to the Holy Land. This was a stopping off point, so the Crusaders spent a lot of money there. Okay, urban areas. Urban means city. Northern Italy was urban rather than rural. The plague had killed up to 60% of the population of Italian cities. The plague had killed up to 60% of the population of Italian cities. And because there were fewer laborers, survivors demanded higher wages and they got it. So workers in the field suddenly became hot properties. Merchants in the de Medici. When we say the de Medici, they are... Um, an Italian family that became very well to do. Merchants were the wealthiest, most powerful class in society, and they dominated politics. And obviously, the de Medici were, the, were one group that did. Individual achievement was to become an important Renaissance theme. Individual achievement is going to become an important Renaissance theme. The Italian city of Florence came under the control of the de Medici family. Cosimo de Medici was the granddaddy of the de Medicis. And they became the wealthiest Europeans at that time. And they made their fortune in trading and banking. Um, <clears throat> Cosimo's grandson, Lorenzo, continued to rule the family um, of Florence and got involved in politics. Classical heritage. Scholars wanted to return to the art and literature of the classical period. Well, what's that? It was ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Scholars wanted to return to this period. One reason the Renaissance began in Italy was that these artists and scholars drew their inspiration from these Roman ruins. Said that earlier. They had uh, um, the Forum, they had the Colosseum, all these arches and beautiful statues to kind of inspire them. Well, we will see that there's going to be a philosophy that's going to abound. It's called humanism. Humanists, uh, well, humanism is the focusing not on the church texts, but on human achievement. I often say it's people that are now not focusing on the creo creator, God, but creation, man, and what he can do. Humanists are going to focus on that human potential and human achievement. They focus on human potential and human achievement. So we see the study of arts and architecture. The study of arts and architecture. And humanism is going to influence these two things, arts and architecture. Okay, enjoyment of worldly pleasures. Humanists suggested that a person might be able to enjoy life now without offending God. They want to enjoy life now without offending God. And although most people were still devout Catholics, the basic spirit of the Renaissance society was secular. Secular means worldly, concerned with the here and the now, not spiritual. People that were wealthy, we're going to become patrons of the arts. In addition to seeking pleasure, Renaissance popes 
beautified Rome by spending money on art. Renaissance popes spent a lot of money on art. They were patrons. A patron is someone who supports the arts by buying paintings, buying sculptures, commissioning people to <clears throat> um, create music. That's what a patron is. A Renaissance man is a man who excelled in many fields and was praised as a universal man. That's the definition of a Renaissance man. Later ages called such people Renaissance men. If you could read, write, study the classics, could speak more than one or two languages, could ride a horse, could wrestle, could handle a sword, you were a Renaissance man. Baldassar Castiglione wrote a book called The Courtier, and in it, Castiglione said, a man should be charming, witty, educated in the classics, Greek and Roman, perform in the arts, and engage in sports. A Renaissance woman would be the same thing, according to the courtier. Upper class ladies should know the classics and be charming, yet not seek fame. Why? Because it's a man-dominated society. Upper class women were well educated but did not have power. They lacked power. Uh, one such notable exception is Isabella de Esta, who was of the de Esta family, another powerful family. She was a patron of the arts. Now, next time we meet, we're going to talk about <clears throat> Renaissance revolutionary, um, revolutionizing the arts. This is Mr. K uh, Case with 17.1a. I'm out.